All right, everyone. So when we last left off, we were um, we created this uh, this uh, Cordova template via the command line interface. We built it and then we we ran it in in the virtual device. There's a command which I'll look up how to run it on on your device. Uh, but it, it would also be, you know, Cordova something something and then run on your device and it'll come out on your device So you never have to get into Eclipse. You think, okay, well, how am I gonna, how am I gonna edit this? Well, that's what we'll talk about. Question. Did you say that when you issue the uh, Cordova emulate command, you don't have to already create a emulation when you do it for I, I think it, I think it might load it for you. I think it might create it might load your, your virtual device for you. I didn't try it, but I think I've tried it before. But you'd have to create the device. Yes, you have oh. to have created one. But you have to um, have one created before you can run it. All right, then. So um, what we'll do, continuing with my PDF that I gave over here, I want to be able to uh, run different... Um, uh, capabilities of Cordova, like the camera and all of that. I could remove them later, but I've got here perhaps one of the easier ways to do it is, is a little copy and paste. I believe we are able to copy from my PDF and paste into the DOS window, so we could try that. Um, let's see. Where's the select? Select tool. Okay, you can try this. Um, uh, maybe my window's too small to show everything, but if you right click anywhere in your document here, mine is set to hand tool. Change that to select tool. Are you on the seventh Cordova PDF? Not yet. I'm num still number six. Number six is the one that's got all of my plugins, my permissions. So back on, on sheet number six, I'm going to right-click anywhere in that paragraph and select Select Tool. What I can do with that is I get you should get the Select Tool, and on step 12, you want to copy all of this italicized portion. You're going to type Cordova Plugin Add, and then you have to type the name of the plugin. For example, Device, <coughs> Battery Status, File. You know, we're not going to use them all, Vibration. But it might just be easier to turn them all on here through my handy copy and paste, and then in Eclipse eventually remove the ones you don't need. So then after you select it, you should be able to right click that block and copy. Go back to your DOS window and right click inside of it and paste. And then I guess you don't even have to enter. Or you might have to enter, but I typed it, and it is uh, starting yeah, to do really something. The line wrap didn't, uh, it really broke up all this line wrap. There's nothing anymore in the line. What was that? It looks like there's not a space oh, at the end of your line, so it's why you ran this thing. So what you have is you can have one line in your PDF. But it did, what, eight, nine lines? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, and, and paste it. Okay, um, I can open uh, DOS. That's probably what it did. Yeah. So, see, this is why it's a little inconvenient. Uh, let me try this. I'm going to put them all on one line, and then I'll put that whole thing in the network drive. Yeah, but did you get any errors? Mine, mine is saying there's errors. Like this. I'm, I'm doing it, and I get a little green, and it says it's getting it, but then I do see here something like org.apache.cordova, blah, 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 not recognized. Did you get any of this is not recognized? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I'm going to Okay, so I'm going to put into the network drive
All right, so if you check in in the network drive now, I put a simple text file, Cordova Plugins. Open that up and copy that whole line. It's on one line now, hopefully with proper spaces. Copy that whole line and then paste it in and see if that did it. All right, so you can try that now. It seems to be working on mine. I put the text file into the network drive for you, copy that whole line, paste it into DOS, and now it seems to understand it. <coughs> that might take a moment, but go ahead and give that a try. All right, so uh, did everyone eventually get a whole long list like that? To confirm that it works, that it worked, uh, type uh, Cordova platforms. Just to show that... Um, Plugins. Plugins, sorry. Plugins. There we go. So type Cordova. After that's all done, you can type Cordova plugins and it should tell you you've got all of these features installed and accessible. Yeah. Yes. So if you open up your folder in your project in the plugins folder, you'll see all of these items as well. So this gives us the latest code to access these features of a device. So that's what I was saying uh, on sheet number six. You do that. You type Cordova plugins. You get 18 plugins. All right. So um, I'm going to leave that DOS window there so open for a moment. And I'm going to open uh, a, a, an Explorer window here, a regular Windows window right there. Go into your project, your test two. Uh, we will just briefly do this, and then we'll get into Eclipse. Um, so if you, if you go to your window here, if you take a quick look in plugins, you should see all of the plugins live there too. That's fine. But what I want to do just to show you, here's one possible workflow which is that um, if we work on our project in this WW folder, then we run the DOS command Cordova build iOS, and it builds the iPhone version. Cordova build Android, and it builds the Android version. Or simply Cordova build, and it builds all platforms at once, having to avoid the Eclipse and such. So we'll do that for a moment, and then we will get into Eclipse because um, it's more familiar. So if you open up that www folder you know, on the root folder of your test 2, don't go in platforms yet. Um, 
Because what happens is, if you make any changes in the platform itself and run the Cordova build command, it will erase what you did in the platform folder and replace it with what's in www. So you want to be careful about that. So open that W folder, and you want to right-click index, and remember good old Notepad++. We can get in there for a moment. Let's edit your index. Right-click, edit with Notepad++. So we'll just change this uh, line 32. It says Apache Cordova. We'll make it say your name. Line 34. Give it a message from when you're connecting. And then line 35, give it a message for when it's ready. So I just changed lines 32, 34, 35. You want to save that. Go back to DOS or the, the command prompt. I'll type Cordova build. I didn't specify which platform, but it's smart enough to know which one. So Cordova build and then Cordova emulate. When that's done, Cordova build, let it do its thing, and now I'm about to do Cordova emulate Android. You have to sign with Cordova build? Yes. And then Cordova emulate Android. Because what build does is it looks in the folder, the WW folder, and then it takes that in and it makes your app for Android, and then we want to emulate it, the last step. So, editing with Notepad, building it in the command line interface, running it on the emulator. Then we were, then we could edit the Android manifest XML file directly with Notepad++. Remember, it's just an XML file, and then build that. And um, yeah, but you gotta know what to edit manually. Yeah. That's exactly. If something's there, you can edit it. But if you don't know what what to edit, then you have to look it up. Um, like the portrait orientation. I don't remember what the, what the code for it is, but I remember I can turn it on easily in Eclipse. And then uh, here I'm, I'm building it on the emulator, and uh, I'm curious, I forget what, which way is it to go on the device. Let me look that up really fast. Well, that's a good point. Where do I look up all of these commands? I seem to know them all, but where am I getting them from? Cordova.apache.org so here, I'm going to look up, if you find it first, let me know. I'm looking up in here, uh, how do I run this on my device again? 
So go to uh, cordova.apache.org and most likely we go over to the documentation somewhere around there and we look up um, run on device. Let's see. Command line interface. Create, build, and deploy. Prerequisites, installing, that's all done. Creating the app, that's what we did. Adding platforms, done. Listing them, building, Cordova build, we did that. Test the app on emulator, Cordova emulate Android, Cordova run Android. You guys are too slow. Cordova run Android. Mine was almost going to work, but I've got to figure a few things out here. Mine says, uh, et cetera, et, um, no, no target specified, deploying to my LG 730. Okay, that's good. Going on and on here, installing on device. Then I got an error, failed to launch app on device, error, failed to install APK, failure, inconsistent certificates, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got a little bit more to do to actually get it to run on the device, but, you know, welcome to running on uh, on the command line. Now it's going to be yours worked? Yeah. All right, perfect. Maybe I've already got one in here called test and that's why it's complaining. I do actually. I've got one that I was working on. So let me uninstall it. Yeah. The other thing is making sure that the, the device is starting to fly. It's not just like asleep. Yeah. Yeah, good point. When it's locked, it might not install. So I had to remove it from mine. Go installing. Okay, it was uh, Cordova Run Android. Obviously, if I had a, a Windows phone attached and properly set up, or an iPhone, I would type Cordova Run iOS or Cordova Run WP8. So there we go. There's my Cordova 4.0 or maybe 3.6 app on my device, ready to rock. I have noticed that you cannot run on a device uh, for iOS unless you have uh, registered as a developer. Yeah, there's more hoops there. You do have to uh, do provisioning files and register the app so that Apple knows you're using it as a device and just a lot of hoops and the $99 uh, developer's fee. Now, I did uh, for a while, let me mute the mic here. I did for a while uh, get a, a school's account and use a, a student account to do all of that and did the work and it worked and then eventually you need to get the, the real account but that's enough for testing purposes. So check with some school that maybe they can help you get that free account for a little while. All right, so uh, who else got uh, managed to get this running on the real device? through the DOS prompt. Okay, cool. That of course assumes that your device's driver is installed and all of that stuff. Question? When, when you do Cordova run and it launches it onto your device, the APK that it's launching and with the, the debugs mode one, is that the it is, because notice if you if you peek around here in the code, using the APK, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, platform Android and build Cordova app debug.apk. It doesn't have the name of your app yet. It's still the debug version. So remember in um, when we were gonna when we were getting those warnings in Eclipse, it was saying set your debuggable option and that sort of thing. Yes. Yes. Um, backup solution was explicit, but um, oh. debug option 
uh, didn't say d uh, Android. Uh, the debug option said not to do it, but I have a feeling that for for command line interface, I do have to set it for production ready. So somewhere in the manifest, I believe I have to we have to set that for production ready, and then it'll install the real one. But then that has to go. Right now, this is fine for our purposes. We're still testing it. When we're finally ready to publish it and all of that, there's that other process like we did in Eclipse for uh, export wizard. We have to do something like that, but in the command line to sign our certificate with our password and then deploy the real file, and then it's a real app. Well, if, if, if we get comfortable with this command line interface, you never need to use Eclipse? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. You could uh, know the right commands, and there's you know probably like six of them to know, ten at the most, and uh, you just do your editing in Notepad or whatever, and then run the appropriate command at the right time, and you do it all through the command line. And you don't need Eclipse. Okay. Yes. How do I run this on my Windows? You can try uh, Cordova. Run Android. Okay. Okay, so this documentation, I was looking at the command line interface. It's several pages long, pretty in-depth, examples and pictures and such. Um, I've condensed it down to sheet number six, basically, but with some omissions here and there. But what I've omitted, I, I am putting into the network folder in the Cordova commands and Cordova plugins text file. Okay, so it does this updating Cordova here. And here's how to change it to a specific version. But I need to know the version number. All right, so everything that we've been doing here is via command line. And then a notepad, of course, to actually edit our code. So that's a workflow that I could then continue with. You know, I could, I could drag and drop my app that I've worked with previously into this folder, Cordova build, and then it takes that app, you know, our SDC app, and now it's, now it's there. It's available. Uh, we could, we could actually try that right now. Uh, if you'd like. And what I'm going to do first though is, is make a backup of my project here. Test 2. Uh, I'm, in, uh, I'm in the window here. I'm going to make a copy of that folder as my backup. So I, I mentioned this trick before. If you have a folder and you right-click and hold, don't let go, right-click and hold and drag to some empty spot and then let go, you get the menu which you can select to copy. So whatever way you want to do it, you can make a copy of your folder. I'm going to right click the test2 folder, right click hold and drag over and then you get the menu, copy. I'm going to leave that copy there because even though everything I've done, I could do it again, it's not super hard. Um, maybe I make a mistake and I want to go back to before I added my own app. So that's what I'll do, I'll make a copy of my test file. And what I'm going to do then is back into my test, my original test here. Uh, I'm going to leave that window open and I'm going to open another window and go into my other folder where I've been working on my SDCE project and um, copy the, the www folder into the www folder of this project. Give that a try if you'd like. So I'm going to open the test2 folder and, and the www folder. Put that over there. 
I'm going to find my current project. My current project in the assets folder, in the WW folder. Basically, I need to take all of this stuff and replace replace what's in the WW folder here. That's why I made a copy of it all, just in case. So make sure you've got a copy of test 2. I'm going to delete everything in that www folder because I'm going to replace it with everything in my main project folder. Okay, so I deleted that. Copy all of this. <coughs> Wait a minute, one thing here. We don't need, for example, Cordova because it will automatically add the latest version, so I'll delete that in a moment. Notice this is just the actual web project. It doesn't need Cordova. Um, so anyway, I'll delete that. I'll copy this over. We won't need Cordova because it's added through that whole build process. So Cordova.js, I'm going to remove that. So now my test2 folder here has my project. I'll go back into <coughs> command line. Now here's one thing. Uh, this is a little DOS trick. If you um, if you don't want to <coughs> retype a command, you can press up on the keyboard, and it'll bring bring back your previous command. And you press up again, and then the previous command, previous command. Then you go down, and it goes down in history. So you don't have to retype a command. You can press up, find your previous commands. I'll do Cordova build. and then Cordova emulate and Cordova run, just so that I can see it on both devices. Question. The the cord the Cordova dot js. Yeah, because this other stuff like Codica and CSS and JS, we created that ourselves, and then the jQuery mobile stuff is for the whole design and and interface and such. But Cordova, we don't need that one because our whole build process creates the version of Cordova when we need it. If we have two of them, then it'll get confused. I deleted that after I put it into the folder. <clears throat> <laughs> Question. I think I made a mistake too. When I do the Cordova build and try, then when I do Cordova emulate, the first time it has an error, but then when I try it again, it gets worse the second time. Did you see what kind of error is it? Well, the main thing 
that I'm seeing is that it's containing the entire process. I get like turned on the entire process. It's telling me that you can't take the entire process. <coughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So let's do this instead of Yeah. 
I don't know what the market is. I don't know what the market is. I don't know what the market is. Everything is down for me. All right, everyone. So I, uh, I, I copied my project over to the folder. I did build and uh, emulate and also run on my device. And I'm going to take a quick look through it. Everything seems to be there. Transitions and such work. Uh, the big thing, of course, is does the do the other cool features work, such as the customization works? Does the map work? Let me load that up. May or may not on the virtual device. I'm going to load it up in my real device. <laughs> okay, the map is loading up on my real device, perfect, and not on the emulator. And then uh, lastly, to check on the manage classes, I can play with that for a moment. Class added, class shows up, good. Try to remove a non-working class, get that, perfect. So yeah, there's my project. I think also here, uh, calendar, that's good. And that should be in-app browser, good. So my app is there now. Very, go ahead, Fred. I noticed two things. One, the icon has yes. two different upgrades. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the slash screen. Exactly, I was about to say that. Uh, no, no, that, that, but that's good that you noticed it. Um, the splash screen, if you had attentive eyes, the splash screen didn't work. Um, and also the, your app icon. Uh, so those things would require, the splash screen specifically, remember that required a few things to set up. Um, let's see, API references. The splash screen needed us to edit files elsewhere within the Android project. That's why that didn't work right away. Yeah. So I would need to edit that elsewhere. And um, similar to uh, with the icons, I need to further edit adding icons and splash screen. So I would have to go in and read that and notice what I would need to do in the command line and, and so forth. Uh, so I'm not going to do those, but, I'm, but all the answers of how to do those are going to be found on various parts of the documentation. But um, once you mastered those, then again, your every all the instructions of how to do this all in the command line interface is at, at cordova.apache.org. Um, so you can keep going through this workflow. And how many of you are, are kind of liking this, just doing it through the command line? So a few people. Was that enthusiastic, or did you yeah. just go like that? No, no, that's absolutely Okay, right. good. <laughs> I, I missed work on the command line. Oh, okay, really. So more more people than I thought were are kind of giving it a thumbs up. Uh, so good. Uh, I would continue to learn on learn this and uh, see see the power of it. It's a little bumpy at the beginning. You saw that I had to do some re uninstalling and reinstalling and all of that. But uh, if you get the hang of it, then it's uh, it could be a pretty smooth workflow. Uh, we'll take a look at then what we could do now with Eclipse. Let's say, well, we want to do this in Eclipse. Now that's unfortunately another bumpy road, but uh, my documentation should, should help with that. Let me give you an overview and then we'll, we'll do it. 
Any questions uh, so far on any of this command line um, interface development? Yes. So we created the test note 2 folder, mm -hmm. and then we basically created a copy of it and imported our files out of Eclipse into the. Yeah, basically. So from the, from the command line, could we just type, um, just switch to the other folder that we created on the desktop to copy and just type build Cordova and it would rebuild the, our original or can we create more apps by just creating another folder and then launching them that way or do we have to do any other setup? Well let me confirm that. I've got that test to copy. copy. So I'm going to go in there test 02 And I've got a space in the name, so I should put, put that. So I'm in there. I'm just going to confirm if this would work by typing Cordova platforms. It's seeing that I've got Android in there, so I could probably go forward. Yeah, you know, I could do Cordova emulate. I copied it at a point that probably the debug APK is already in there somewhere. Um, yeah, I'll go for it here. That'll probably work. But yeah, that um, there are some shortcuts here and there. Um, I did copy it at a point where I had already done building and emulating, so yeah, there's probably the the APK in there, but if I do change it, then it goes in there. Now that probably replaced the original test in there. So it's taking the same namespace and all of that and the same icon and such, but um, just, just to fully test it, what I could do also is slightly edit the copy. Nothing drastic. I'm going to go to the copy and just go in and maybe change a little bit of the text right here. Well, actually, very drastic, right? Because this has the old Apache Cordova welcome screen, and the new one has my SDC. Yeah, so completely it did it did work that way. But there must, so there must be some place in, in this folder where it has the package name. Yeah, it's going to be outside of the www folder. This other stuff, this other supporting stuff is what controls then what gets fed into the appropriate SDK to give it what it needs to run on that device. So I'm going to take a quick look at config XML. Uh, that's not, uh, oh yeah, there's test2 right there. Let's see what happens. I'll just change that and then build and run that. So I put an X in the name, and that hopefully then shows up as that. But I think I also have to change elsewhere the the name, the package name, com.campos.test2. So that might not be the complete solution there. But uh, in short, it seems that, yeah, you've got your project in a couple of separate... You make a master project, you just copy that a few times, and now you've got a new project. But you need to go in and edit the, the, the package name and such so that it is a different account, a different project. Yeah, it shows up there. Probably internally somewhere it's still listing the original package name. There's the permissions, all of them. Yep, that's a. Did it overwrite your test two icon? Not the icon itself, just the text below it. But then what I could also do is. Go back over here, go there, emulate, emulate that one again. <clears throat> 
So I'm going back to the original. I'm going to the test 2 where I've got my SDCE. I'm going to emulate that. And then it comes in. The icon, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be the same icon, but with the test 2 name. <coughs> yeah. So it's just changing that. It's not creating another another app. It's taking the same package name. So I'll have to dig elsewhere in there somewhere uh, to change that so that it fully creates a different app. Because the internal name. And then we look in here. Oh, it was right there, right above it. Yeah, com capitalist test 2, test two. x2. It's just easier to retype it. I think this should give me a second app because I've created a brand new package, a brand new, a brand new pack, a brand new app. They're all defined by that package. Remember that I said a, a while ago, there's many types of calculators, and they could all be called calculator. But what keeps them separate is that they've got that, se that different package name. That's how the second, uh, second icon is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So changing that in the... So just to show everyone, um, that was inside of your, your project not in the WW folder, but in this config XML file. It's a simple XML file. If you want to take a look at what I did, go back to your, you know, get out of your WW folder and then edit your config XML file, and that's got some basic stuff about your app, such as line 2, there's your package name. If you mistyped your name, let's say, when you typed the DOS command a while ago, you typed campote instead of campos. You could go in there and, and fix it there. And then what's the name that appears below the icon? There it is there. Now what's the icon itself? That requires a little bit more looking at the documentation to, to figure that out. There's two places where you can say That's like doing when we were doing refactor rename. Remember how that was a bit complicated? Here it looks like one file, two lines, and now you've got a different app. You can rename the folder easily in Windows. <coughs> I suppose also you could fill in your own stuff under author and description to really get it all set up. And I'm guessing that the custom icons will vary from uh, platform to platform, mm -hmm. so you'll have to put the correct sizes in the right folders and so forth, uh, that there aren't necessarily tools for, for that. In that you can take one icon and it'll put the right one everywhere for you. As far as the right sizes and so forth, no. I haven't explored it enough because I haven't created uh, apps in a variety of platforms. I've played with iPhone and uh, and Android and a little bit Windows Phone, but different ways. So um, I don't know how much of a universal app there is to help you with all of those details, but I suppose that's what Adobe Build is. You know, their their phone gap, their whole phone gap service. So I've got here, for each platform you can define a pixel-perfect icon set to fit different screen resolutions. And this gets edited in your XML file. Mm. So the single XML file will have definitions for all the different platforms that you're checking? Yeah, and that's part of why they moved to a command line interface, because now this is supposed to be easier to work with version control and such central code repository and then you can deploy to all platforms in theory. So this master XML, config XML file, then trickles down to all your platforms. So it seems relatively easy to do this, but you can play with that. Uh, in your XML file, you add a little section about platform for Android. You put in your icons, the different dimensions, into the res Android folder with 
whatever name you want, I suppose. But if you use these names, you'll probably be better off. And you put your icons of those different sizes according to the documentation. You have to look up what is LDPI exactly. Well, it's 48 by 48 or something. You put them in there, which would be... Where would that be? Yeah, it's a this isn't a folder currently for res, so you'd have to create one. Possibly. Let's see what this says oh, up here. Um, the images folder in WW? Because the, the documentation is saying, notice, notice the path. It's saying res, Android, and then you'll find your icons. So that's relative to the XML file. So this is going to be all written in your XML file, which is saying, well, we should see a res folder, and then Android, and then the icons. I suppose we could change that to point to the platform folder, and then the Android folder, and then your icons in there. Mm -hmm. But I'm wary of that, because as I said, whenever you do build, it takes what's in WW and triples, trickles down to the other apps. So perhaps, maybe I'm missing it in the documentation, but perhaps we manually create a folder here called res, and then a folder in there called Android, and then put all our icons in there and reference it in the XML file. Yeah, but like I said, the platforms are created when you, whenever you do build, created and recreated, to my knowledge, whenever you do build. The section for BlackBerry, the image, the icon source is res BlackBerry, for Amazon, uh, Fire, the Fire OS of Amazon is an offshoot of Android. It's their own rebranded version of Android. That way you get to reuse them? Yeah. Deploying from uh, from this workflow, you know, we have to have a manifest at XML and stuff like that, which I haven't seen yet. Yeah. Uh, inside each platform, start from. Yeah, something like that. Um, because each platform has its own requirements for what what it needs to fully deploy. So, looking further in the documentation, we'll see that um, that that's going to be the case. We're going to need to create um, or work with the XML file specifically for the particular platform. So I'm just experimenting here. Uh, I did I did create that folder and put my icon and then I put that code from the documentation. What's that? Because it's hard. Because it's it's hard. Uh, because it because everything that we learned was 
everything that we learned previously works from beginning to end with a slightly older version of the code. And then code's always going to keep moving forward. So what I'm talking about right now would have worked when I talked about it. And then a couple of weeks later, the brand new Android version 5.0 came out. So it keeps evolving. We can't, you can't ever catch it. So I, I thought it would be useful to let's learn something that will work at that point, uh, but we're never going to catch that train. You know, when Google stops making a new version of Android, but they're not going to do that. So let's see what happens here. I put my icon, I put my code. Didn't do it, but maybe because I only have the XHDPI version. I was trying to cheat there because I've only got one of the icons. But I suppose I could keep cheating by just rename this thing, even though it's the wrong size. about not finding it? No, I didn't. I didn't look for it. I didn't look for any feedback. I just mm -hmm. I just checked it in the emulator. So we need to look up a little bit more how to get that to work exactly. Okay, so based on everything that I've been talking about, <clears throat> it's all pretty much in that step, in that sheet 6. What I didn't put in step 6 can also be found uh, in the documentation over on Cordova.Apache, specifically in the command line interface section. Anything I didn't didn't uh, have in the sheet is in there. Yeah, I noticed in the URL up there at the top of the screen that uh, it says version 4.00, which is not the version that we are running on. So your documentation may be uh, misleading. Oh, yes, yes. This is 4.0, and apparently we've still got 3.6. So maybe I could look in there, and then we'll see what's wrong. But I don't I don't see that would be a radical change. No. Other things. Major version number. Yeah, th yeah, that is true. Um, so anyway, there's that. Um, I'm going to go over then an overview here. Any last questions about the command line interface? Yeah. At the, at the dot prompt, if I type Cordova space dash V, it says 4.12. But yeah. in other places, it said we were running 3.6. This is what I would assume is the right docu is the right one, but I did see when we did uh, when we first did uh, Cordova create it it I saw in there three point six. So um, yeah, there's a discrepancy. I, I don't know exactly what to say about that. I would assume that because this says four point one, we would be working with four point one. They would have documentation for 4.1, because on the documentation screen, 4.1 would be the one of the choices. Yeah, maybe 4.1 is so new, but they're already 4.12. I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. Let's see what's over on PhoneGap, because they're pretty much 
Yes. Sister sister projects. <coughs> so over at the documentation of phone gap, three point five is at the corner here. So then that'll lead us into something uh, which I want to then say in, in Sheet 7. I put Sheet 7 in the network folder also if you haven't gotten it yet. But this is where I go in, in here and it's 18 steps um, and a few things that might go wrong, which when I was setting this up a um, couple of months ago, they did go wrong. So other things might go wrong and they're not listed here. And this is, this is the problem. This is why I, we stuck with 2.9 because uh, I'd done it before, I, I know it worked, I retested it, retested it, this stuff is moving forward, I was trying to put documentation for the 3x branch and now they're on 4, so that's the thing about you've got to stay on top of this, write the documentation, get the stuff to work, and this is why I also it was a good idea to wait to the end because we might have been struggling with a lot of this halfway through our app and then we wouldn't have gone further to finish our app. So we finished our app at this version, 2.9, and now we're playing with 4.0 and we're running into issues here and there. And But at least our app is out there. Version 1 is out there. When we work some more and figure this stuff out, we'll have version 2. But looking at my documentation here, I'm talking about in Eclipse, I'm going to do the file import like we've done all along. We would do the import. Um, I would go specifically into the test folder and then go into the 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 platform folder and say open the Android project in the platform folder in test 2. To, uh, there's a couple of things that want to import and it doesn't look useful to, tr to import one of these, Cordova lib. I import it and then I was noticing, and very odd, another reason why I stuck with 2.9 was that as soon as simply opening up the project it had red X's and in my and I, I couldn't really find any mention of where, why is that problem happening in the Cordova documentation. I had to go to Stack Overflow and Stack Exchange and, and look around there and people were saying, oh, okay, it seems that you're missing this library, which is odd because I thought it was all set up in the command line. So in here I talk about um, what also needs to be done is going over to Apache, uh, to cordova.apache.org and downloading the, the missing library, unzipping it, and then loading it into Eclipse. So here I'm saying, okay, go ahead and download that library and then load that into Eclipse, which is a special um, library project, and then we have to link our test file with that library, and then that'll get rid of the error message. So this is what I'm saying about it, that there's still bumps in the road, all the documentation is here. You can try it on your own. I think what we'll do is, you know, this is still, this could take some more effort and such. But um, since I did give this out a while ago, did anyone go through sheet six and seven at any point throughout these classes? Uh, weeks ago. Um, How far did you get along with it? Um, I did get things sort of working. Uh, so I was a, uh, but uh, then I tried to rename my uh, project. Huh. Everything went. Oh, wow. Everything exploded. I just basically gave up on it. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Fred? Uh, I just went through sheet six, and then wasn't sure. after I finished sheet six, I wasn't sure what to do with that. So I didn't go any further. Yeah, seven was, was, was the next one. Um, so. There's other things in here, like for some reason, when you when you get this first section working of 18 steps, and you've got your test two project in Eclipse, you open up the WW folder, and it's empty. There's a file in there that says, "Where did www go?" And you read that, and it says, "Well, there's there's a filter in the project that hides that folder for some reason." So then this is the step to remove that, and then you can see your WW folder with your index file and your CSS file and all of that. So if you want to, or just follow along for a moment, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try these steps and see what happens. So I'm going to go into Eclipse. I'm going to close this stuff here. 
and this I've got my my 2.9 project in there but what I'll do is if you close your files and then you right click your project and it clicks in Eclipse you right click it and then select close project you know you'll close it so that Eclipse won't pay attention to it if there's errors and such so I'm going to close it in Eclipse And then as before, I'll go to File, Import, we've seen that. Existing Android Code, we've seen that. And I'm going to browse to the desktop where I've got Test 2. Inside of Platforms, and select the Android folder. So mine's got Android and Firefox, but obviously you want to be opening the Android project. You don't want the WW folder, that's only the... That's only the app, you know, that's only the interface and such itself. It's not the whole Android project. That's what's in platforms. Now, this is where I was saying. You could do the workflow of just command line interface or go to Eclipse. And here's our problem. If we open this in Eclipse and start working with it, and then one day go back into the command line and do uh, Cordova build, it'll erase everything that we did because we've built, we've rebuilt it. Um, so if you go into and the documentation itself, it says somewhere here and there, if you decide to go into platform support, or where is it? Platform guides. Yeah, platform guides. Here it'll explain, well, what do you need to do for Android with Eclipse and everything? It'll tell you there. If you do decide to go this route, then you what you're going to miss out is you're not going to be able to do Cordova build um, to do all the apps at once because you, whatever's inside of the platform will get will get superseded by the build command. So that's just something to know about. I'm going to select that Android folder, but here's one way to kind of guard against that. This is where you can turn on copy project. That way you leave alone the original one you created in the command line, and this one is going to get copied into your Eclipse workspace, but it'll be independent from that other, that other copy. My documentation shows that it doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to do what's expected, that if you also import this Cordova library, so I, I'm going to turn it off. I'm only importing the actual test to project. This Cordova library doesn't seem to, to work as advertised. And there we go. Problems. Uh, 624 problems? Yep. Pretty good ratio. So furthermore, my documentation, as I said, I've done this and I've tried to figure out all these answers for you guys. What it seems to be then is that I need to import the Cordova library. Um, back from the Cordova website and then import it. I have, which this may or may not work, but I put it into the network folder for you. I've got I've got the library that I'm talking about in the Cordova folder. Cordova Android. Now that's 3.6.3 which I think is what we have, even though one screen says we've got 4.0. So uh, I put the library on the desktop for the moment and I need to import it into Eclipse. So 
So let's see, I'm saying to import that import project turn off package project and test. So right here. Doesn't look like those are useful for anything. So in my documentation, I'm saying here I'm going to turn those off and only import this framework, copying it into the workspace. That also comes in with its own baggage for some reason. And then I go to the pro properties of the test project. So I'm saying here, um, uh, package explorer, right click on test 2, select properties, at left under Android, under library, select Cordova Lib and remove it, and then replace it with the one I just imported. So again, this, I don't know why out of the box this doesn't work, so uh, here it's saying, well, where's that Cordova Live? And that is not the one that we, that was, that we were possibly importing previously. Remove that, add this one that I just imported. <coughs> Red X is gone, warning is still here. But I believe up to this point is enough for me to actually start using it in Eclipse. So from here I can start working on it in Eclipse if I don't want to use the command line, but you see I don't I still don't know. I'm not happy with those nagging warning messages. So I I created this project through the command line. I'm opening an Eclipse. It's not working right away. It's got a bunch of weird little problems here and there, like uh, I don't I don't know, I didn't want to quite deal with that for in class. And here's another weird thing. So when uh, when I go in, this should look familiar, and then I go in into assets. Where is WW text? And it tells me in here, well, you've got the project comes with some um, file filters so that it doesn't show you a few things for some reason. And that's telling me to go into properties. It's telling me here, um, right here. Um, Properties, resource, resource filters, and remove that. Resource filters, and here it is. It's saying hide, hide the WW folder for some reason. I don't need that. Oh, yeah. Can I cancel that? There you go that one. Yeah. Assets WW. There is WW folder. There's it's my stuff. It's possible that the reason you're having so many warnings is related to like manifest file and the version targeting and things like that. Part of it is that, but from when I was looking through those errors and such, part of it is like things that are like right here, class is raw type. Reference to generic class T should be parametized inside the configured Java file. And, and such, there's a lot of these problems that are like, I don't know why why these things, like resource leak snapshot is never closed. So that kind of gives me pause. That's why. Yeah, that's it for them <laughs> Yeah, yeah, good point. Warnings are warnings, but errors are worse. Yeah. So all my files are here. Notice I didn't put any of this. I put it back on the WW folder when I did build. Then it copied all that stuff into the appropriate platforms. And then I can work on it on the IDE in Eclipse in this case. 
I could do sort of something like that. If I, if I was on a Mac, then I could load this up in Xcode and continue to work on it in Xcode on the Mac and then make my iPad app. Right. All right. And when you do that uh, build on uh, for iOS, it does create a .xcode file that uh, you can open up. It's sort of like their manifest file? Well, no, I mean, it's literally, uh, it's it's almost like it's a, a folder, that, but it is, has a .xcode uh, name. Oh, OK. Uh, so it's a package of Mac OS does that sort of thing. So I, I zoomed through it, but what I was doing was all in my Sheet 7, and I'm kind of ready to ready to go at this point. I've got my files in here. I could edit them in Eclipse just like before, and I can open up the manifest file and work on that. It's just that I've diverged from, from the command line, so I need to be aware of that. Although I copied this into a workspace, so if I do accidentally build, I won't lose this because it went into my my uh, Eclipse workspace. So I do invite you to try that out. If you discover things, send me an email. I'd like to know about that too. Pass it on to future classes. If you, do, if you did go through the process of publishing your app, uh, great. Tell your friends and family about it. You've got a real-life app. And uh, if you do proceed and, and publish an app, I'd like to know. Send me an email and and I'll and I'll and I'll check it out. Uh, the very last things I wanted to touch on, and then we'll fa finish up the class. But this is uh, we were talking about going going the route of the latest versions of Eclipse. I'm sorry, the latest versions of um, Cordova.